I'm getting closer now to hopefully finishing this up. I had to go back to Micro Center because I realized that one liter may not be enough, especially for a first time or new build. So they didn't have another bottle of acid green, so I just replaced it and got two neon green because they did have two of these. I also bought this leak detector. I do think it's a little rich, but I figured that it will pay for itself if it saves the system from having a leak when I first test it. And finally, I got a fill bottle and then a bracket for the pump, which I had not realized I would have needed. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and continue the build. So at this point, I'm just still mocking everything up and where I want it to go, but to be quite honest, I kind of don't know what I'm doing. I didn't really research water cooling too much in terms of how to actually build it, but I know that I am anxious to attempt bending some of these pipes. So I did get a tube bending kit, which will hopefully assist me in not wasting too much pipe as I try to master this art. And I suppose I can just kind of go ahead and start playing with that now. I'm now getting my first kind of hands-on experience with cutting the tubing. So I did just a little test one to see how these fittings go on in between the two cards, but I wasn't very happy with the piece I cut. So I cut two more right here that are each 30 millimeters and they're actually like nearly identical, which is cool. So this thing has been coming in handy. And I find that doing the deburring uh, in the sink with the water running uh, produces some nicer results. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of keep playing around here. I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this. <laughs> I didn't know if I would, but once I started playing with the cutting and the tubing and everything, I, I'm enjoying it. So I've just been playing with the design and everything for this and just doing some bends on the pipes and things of that sort. And I've decided that because it's coming from the back of this radiator into the inlet of the two cards, I think I want to do like a spiral down. So I want to make a mandrel for this in CAD, which is actually pretty simple with some of the tools Fusion has. So basically it will come out of the radiator like this, and then starting like right here, it will kind of spiral down into the GPU. So I'm just doing some measurements and stuff, and then I'll 3D print a mandrel to allow me to do that, and it will be uh, hopefully cool. All right, so I don't know if this is gonna work, but I just made this little mandrel. So essentially you'll put the front of the tube in here, which I suppose will kind of work. That should probably be cut straight, but that's okay. And I made it a little oversized. So all I'm going to do is just combine these in a way that cuts the tube off the mandrel. And now that I have that, I will just basically go ahead and throw this on the printer, which I can probably just do now. Obviously doing this with PLA, oh, there's some robot parts, is going to, like it will probably melt pretty quick. So I'm just going to try it in the strength setting, but that'll probably take hours to print. And I want to kind of just like <laughs> play with it now. So it's easier to just print them multiple times and save an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I think this will be kind of hilarious. <laughs> Hopefully it works, but I think it'll be fun. So just a quick update. I've gotten what one of the more difficult runs I think was going to be done and it's from this radiator to this front radiator and I also have a simple run from the pump to the front radiator and now you can just see that I'm kind of playing with the little mandrel I made. The problem is it's weak PLA so it deforms under the heat and there's a spiral. There's a different try I had made, which looks better on camera than it does in person. So I'm not sure that I'm gonna do any sort of spiraling. However, I just kind of wanted to do a quick little update of where I'm at right now, and hopefully I can get this buttoned up tonight. So this isn't the final setting. I actually have to take the whole thing apart now and just tighten everything. However, I think I'm just gonna go with this design this one's not fully pushed down, so it's not actually like super curved down that way. It just looks like that. And then I don't know about this run here. So I'm just gonna tighten everything and use the pressure tester to see if there are air leaks, and then I will decide what to do from there.
Now, before I go ahead and test the actual loop to see if there are any leaks, I'm going to wire the system up just so that everything is properly fit in there when I test it for air leaks. And then if it doesn't have any, I can go ahead and fill it. If it does, I undo it a little. I have skipped over a bit just because of how tedious all of this really was, but here's the final loop design. So you can kind of just get a picture of how it is. I do have to get the Sharpie off the back side of that, but that's just a teeny little alcohol wipe will do. So, and it's been leak testing for probably five minutes now and holding six PSI. I believe they said it tested at four. So, and I also was like, kind of like abusing it and the number still stays and I, so I'm happy about that. Uh, the back is just a huge wiring loom mess because of the way these fancy new cases are. <laughs> it seems like you can just shove all the wiring in the back side of it, which, you know, I'm for it. I, uh, oh, excuse me, I like that. As opposed to the old one where uh, it was harder to do wire management. So the cards need to be plugged in. I need to figure out how to fill this thing and do all that. And then the top radiator fans are hopefully in the right orientation because I stripped that end screw and I don't think I'd be able to get it out without just destroying one of these fans. So I would like to postpone doing that. <laughs> but other than that, it's all wired up. So I'm going to look up the fill procedure and hopefully get my first look at this. I've moved it out to where it's going to live as I didn't want to move it around too much after putting coolant in it. And the pump is running right now. It's been on for a while. Um, I noticed there's some foam and bubbles on top. And you can actually see that it's a little wet right here, but that's actually from the foam coming out when I fill it, so it's not leaking at all. And I'm just running the pump by itself using a power adapter. So I'm just going to let it run for a while, and then I will go ahead and actually run all the components, which will be interesting. Certainly looks cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't have a lot else to say right now. I apologize for how dark it is, but I did just want to show what it looks like with the lights and all that fun stuff. Overall, this was really something that I had underestimated the intricacies and difficulty of the build. I'm happy I did it. Um, I don't know that I would choose to do it again, <laughs> but at the end of the day, really the whole point of this was to keep these little guys cool because before they were cooking. So you can see that the CPU has remained air cooled and the wiring is questionable at best, but I am pretty happy with the way it looks. And I'm gonna do some preliminary testing of the GPU temperatures compared to how they were before. I do want a quick shout out OpenRGB for Ubuntu, which is in this case how I'm using it. It is for other platforms as well. Essentially, it allows you to control all of your RGB lighting without having to deal with manufacturer software, which is very nice. Unfortunately, the Leon Lee Uni V2 fans don't work with that right now, so I'm kind of stuck with the um, rainbow kind of stuff with the fans, but that's secondary. I'm okay with that. So yeah, this is kind of how it looks, and it is tempered glass, so when I shut the side panel, it actually screws shut, so it won't stay super secure right now. It's a little darker and dimmer. It is giant and I am a little scared about having to place it from up there down there without getting fingerprints all over the glass and stuff, but yeah. So I'll quickly just do a temperature test comparison and that will conclude this video. And I'm kind of happy about that so I can go back to fun stuff like that little guy. So I'm running the fans at 100% and I had to hop over to Windows to really test the temperature on the GPU because I was having problems getting the fans working in Linux, at least getting them to speed up. So I'm running for Mark. It's uh, 15 and a half minutes and it's staying at 58 Celsius and 69 Celsius hotspot, which Claude tells me is pretty good <laughs> since I'm new to all this. So that's gonna really conclude the video and I'll just hope that this thing never leaks and doesn't have to be moved again. Uh, it certainly looks cool. I'm happy with the aesthetics. And Claude tells me that I should be happy with the temperature as well. So 
I'll figure out how to get the fans properly functioning speed-wise in Ubuntu. And now, that's it.